Thank you for your introduction. Um, I'm Jie Huang from CISPA Southland University. Today I'll introduce our work about, about compiler-based library privilege separation on stock Android. This is a joint work with Oliver Sven and Professor Bacchus. In the procedure of Android app development, third-party libraries are commonly integrated with the host app to alleviate development effort. Since those third-party libraries are not released by app developers themselves, they are always deemed as untrusted code and can bring a lot of privacy concerns. The privacy and the security sensitive resources on Android are protected by two security mechanisms. The first one is the permission mechanism. Um, the sensitive system and the application services on Android can only be accessed by permission protected APIs an application has to declare all the permissions it wants to use in its Android manifest file, and it can only access those data after being granted those permissions by users. This permission model is an application-based model. Both the host components and the third-party libraries share the same permission set. That means the untrusted third-party code has the potential of abusing permissions inherited from the host app. The second, set, the second security mechanism is sandboxing. Android is established on Linux. It takes advantage of Linux user-based uh, resources isolation mechanism, which is named as sandboxing, to protect host resources from being compromised by other applications. Unfortunately, um, the host component and the third-party libraries share the same user ID and uh, reside in the host sandbox. So the untrusted third-party code can access host resources, such as local files, runtime data, and even host user interfaces, with no need of further verification. We can see both of the default Android security mechanisms are failed to protect host resources from being compromised by untrusted third-party code. In particular, advertising library, one of the... Could you speak a little closer to the microphone? Yeah. Oh. Like that, it's okay? <laughs> In particular, advertising library, one of the most popular third party libraries, are not rare for gathering user information. A lot of existing works have proved that advertisement library uh, can access and uh, leak host resources easily and unnecessarily, which, which bring a lot of privacy concerns. To mitigate the privacy threats brought by those third-party libraries, one solution is app compartmentalization. The existing compartmentalization models can be categorized into two classes based on their deployment strategy. The first class is the system-centric solutions. In those solutions, compartmentalization modules are always shipped as a part of the firmware. The custom the customized system can just load the untrusted code in an isolated process or service that decouples their privileges from the host component. And the monitoring codes in those solutions are usually run in elevated privileges by design, so no privilege escalation is needed. The disadvantage of those solutions is that um, system modification is necessary, and sometimes even developer support is needed. Although those solutions keep the original app, um, which maintains the same origin model of Android's app updating mechanism, and those, the di distribution of those customized systems is still so hard for ordinary users. The second class is application layer solutions. Uh, in those solutions, system modification is not needed. App repackaging and the inline reference monitoring techniques are always used to uh, separate library privileges from the host component. Those solutions abstain from developer support and the privilege escalations. But the shortcoming is that um, those app repackaging techniques break the application signature. Um, the repackaged application can no longer auto update it after library isolation. We can see both of the existing solutions um, require either system modification or app signature breaking, which brings some side effects more or less. Considering this situation, um, we try to solve this problem from a different perspective. We use advertising library as our target, 
and try to find a library privilege separation model which can be deployed with no need of system modification and app signature breaking. Our solution here is a compiler-based app compartmentalization mechanism, which is named as Compartist. Since Android's privileges are bound to use ID to establish a robust library privilege separation model, we opt in our solution for splitting an ad-supported app into two different applications, each with a distinct UID and run in its own sandbox. This is an overview of our system. At the beginning, we have an ad-supported app. Then we run this app through our Compartist tool. The result will be two isolated applications, one host application and one advertisement application. Those two isolated applications can communicate with each other through inter-process communication channel. And uh, our Compartist tool is an extension of Android's Stick to OAT compiler. This customer compiler is operating completely on application layer at compile time. So no system modification and app signature breaking is concerned in our solution. The only shortcoming in our solution is that either app virtualization technique or elevated privilege is needed to validate those now compartmentalized principles. More specifically, Compartists need to access a specific folder of the target app to replace the original banner file, which will be loaded by the system. And uh, this elevated privilege here is merely needed to override that banner file, which is just a trade-off for exempting from system modification and uh, app signature breaking. The primary challenge in our solution is how to transform from the integration between the host components and the advertising libraries into the remote in inter-process communication channel. Before isolation, the host components and the third-party libraries are integrated with each other, so the library codes can be accessed easily by some local method invocations, since they share the same sandbox. But now we move the advertisement library outside, the original local calls to those advertisement libraries have now to be calls over IPC, so we need to establish a new inter-application communication channel to reconnect those now broken library calls. To solve this challenge, the first thing we do is to investigate how does an advertisement library integrate with the host application. We looked into the official API documentations and the library packages of all those top 10 advertisement libraries and check whether a specific um, integration technique can be used to integrate that library. From this table, we can see uh, most of the advertisement libraries share a common set of well-defined integration technique, which makes them a minimal target for separating them at integration, part, at integration point from their host components. Now we can come to the system design and the implementation part of our work. There are three key parts in our solution. The first part is the establishment of an inter-application communication channel. Um, since the original library local calls are now impossible in a library isolate, isolated model, so we need to establish a new IAC channel to forward all those library calls. Uh, this is the overview of our newly established bundle-based IAC channel. Host component is the library call invoker in the host application. By some local calls, this library invocation will be delivered to add help component, which is responsible for processing all the library call information for further transmission across process boundaries. And its uh, advertisement service app side counterpart is add service component. It is in charge of extracting the target library calls from information received from the host side, and it is also responsible for executing the actual library calls at advertisement service app side by reflection. The component connects the host side ad help component and the advertisement side ad service component as a basic bundle component for inter-process communication channel on Android. In this newly established IPC channel, three kinds of APIs are defined. Add invocation APIs are for host side library call delivery. Callback APIs deal with library callbacks in an opposite way, 
and the sync APIs are for status synchronization between the host app and the remote advertisement app. With all the stub and uh, with all the proxy and the stubs generated for those APIs, a new connection between the host app and the remote advertisement app can be established. Can be established, and uh, there are still some problems. Once uh, on Android, only uh, data transferred data transferred in band IPC must be primitives. It means com complex tab must be can only be passed passed through if it. Uh, converted into primitives. Obviously, advertisement cap are not included in them. One solution is to create a proxy for each of those advertisement class, but it requires deep into the library package, uh, especially for field access processing. Um, to reduce the library support effort, we, we use a set of generic API to forward all those library calls. Instead of forwarding all those library calls directly, we forward library call information. To make those generic APIs unified, we introduce a passable container data structure wrap class to carry all those objects exchanged, in, exchanged between the host application and the library components. This is one of the add invocation API. Uh, from here, we can see this wrap class has its own serialization and deserialization logic. Since objects exchanged in a local method call can either be possible or impossible, so wrap class need to marshal and un unmarshal all those objects for its up and lower layer components. And the other parameters and the, uh, and the return type will be wrapped into will be encapsulated and uh, transferred by the, those wrap class objects. And the, and the other parameter information and the method name of this add invocation API carries more information about the target library call operation. With all those informations, um, the target library call can be restored at advertisement service app site remotely by refraction. Let's use an example to describe this process. Mm. At the beginning, the host component wants to initialize an add view uh, instance, and this library call will be delivered to add help component. Add help will ask wrap class to generate a wrap class object for parameter of this library call, which is context here. Since context is not possible across process boundaries, so only the type information will be wrapped into this wrap class. Together with the target type information add view, this wrap class object will be put into the IPC channel and sent to the remote advertisement service app side. Once arrived to the advertisement service app, this API will instruct the add service component to generate a new add view instance with context as its initialization parameter. In our design, all the advertisement objects generated will be only stored in the advertisement service app side. So only the reference to this advertisement object will be wrapped into the uh, wrap class object and transfer back to the host application for further use. Callback API uh, works in the same way, but in a reverse direction. After the establishment of our new band-based IAC channel, um, next part is about the design of the advertisement service app. Usually, an advertising library is not only integrated with the host application in code level, which has been done in the IPC channel. It's also integrated with the host's user interface. So we need to establish a new layout management mechanism to keep the visual fidelity after moving advertisement library outside the host application. Our solution here is to use a folding window to show band advertisement remotely. Instead of re removing this advertisement view directly, we replace it with an empty view. Uh, and this empty view will occupy exactly the same space as the original advertisement. By overlapping this empty view, uh, the folding window can just show advertisement the, the same as the original app does. Um, after, apart from that, another problem comes after library isolation is how to keep the life cycle management of the advertisement view. Before isolation, um, the, the life cycle of the advertisement is controlled by 
Android's activity lifecycle management mechanism. But now we move the advertisement library outside. So the now isolated remote advertisement view cannot be synchronized with the host activity as before to reconstruct this lifecycle dependency. Um, we need some lifecycle management. We monitor the uh, lifecycle of its host activity and send all those status data to the remote advertisement app. With those status data, the floating window can just show advertisement uh, the, the same as the or original app does, and uh, the remote advertisement can just disappear and uh, uh, appear together with the host app. Apart, apart from that, um, we to prevent malicious app from uh, stealing ad revenue by continuously sending synchronization message that instruct the ad service component to just overlay any other applications with malicious apps advertisement view. Um, we, in our design, only the host activity that on top of the system activity stack can be allowed to ask for a advertisement overlapping. After solving all those problems, we use our compiler-based app rewriting technique to deploy our solution. Compartist is established on Artist, and the Artist is an extension of Android Stick to OAT on device compiler by adding an optimization path. Compartist extends Artist with a compartmentalization module and uh, to achieve our library isolation goal. The deployment of our solution is just the process of target app recompilization. Um, before recompilization, um, the application code file class.dx uh, will be merged together with our compartmentalization support package. And this, and this merged file will be recompiled by Compartist tool. In the process of recompilization, Compart module will traverse all the host methods and replace all those library calls with our newly established IPC calls. <laughs> Here is an example. Our compact module will traverse the target method graph. When it discovers an entry node for um, target library call, it will then um, inspecting all the foreign library call related nodes and, uh, work and find out the target library operation. By, operate, by replacing all those operation related nodes with our ad help um, invocation nodes, the original library local calls can be replaced with our newly established IAC calls. By doing that, a strong trustworthy boundary can be established between the host component and the remote advertisement app. Now the remote advertisement app and the host component can be separately privileged. The output of our Compartist tool is the binary file of the instrumented app. As mentioned before, our Compartist tool is an extension of Android Stick to OAT compiler. It is operating completely on application layer at compile time. So um, by replacing the binary file of the target app with our newly recompiled one, our solution can be deployed with no need of system authentication and app signature breaking. And this replacement operation is the only place that elevated privilege is needed in our design. After the deployment of our solution, uh, we use monkey-based uh, app automatic testing framework MonkeyTube to evaluate the robustness of our solution. We run compartments on more than 3,000 apps. The result shows that around 92% of those supported apps uh, can still survive the automatic test after the deployment of our solution, which can indicate the robustness of our solution. And uh, among all those app success, around 74% around of them triggers advertisement calls in the process of testing. To find out the reason why the rest of them didn't trigger advertisement calls, we test several of them manually and discover that some apps just need the log information or click a specific button to jump into the advertisement course. This low hit rate could be the common problem that all the automatic random testing tool suffers from. To evaluate the performance of our solution, we create a simple application which contains only advertising library invocations. 
we compare the execution time both before and after our instrumentation on different phases. The result in this table shows that um, the overhead for both banner and interstitial advertisement are all limited and acceptable. But the transformed overhead for application start phase cost quite a lot. And that's because in our solution, we need to connect to the remote advertisement service app at the beginning of host app launching. So we waited for a fixed 100 milliseconds to ensure the establishment of our connection. That could be the prime reason of this overhead and just as our expectation. The evaluation results shows our solution can establish a strong trustworthy boundary between the host app and the remote advertisement app with only limited overhead. But there are still some limitations here. Our solution is only suitable for those loosely integrated libraries because of the IPC overhead and the, the visual fidelity problem. And the library cost by refraction and the native code directly in our solution will be missed. Compartist is established on Android 7 now, uh, since it relies on Android Stick to OAT compiler, which is newly imported to Android. So only Android 7 and above are possible to be supported by our solution. In the future, we plan to adopt the domain isolation mechanism to the single so advertisement service app to enhance the library bridge protection. And we are currently working on component-specific testing toolkit to improve the hit rate and code coverage of automatic testing. And to conclude, uh, in this work, we investigate the integration pattern of those uh, top 10 advertisement libraries. And we establish a new compiler-based app compartmentalization mechanism, which can separate advertisement libraries outside the host, host app and support uh, cross-application advertising. And the deployment of our solution concerns no system modification and app signature breaking. Thanks for your attention. That's all about my work. John Criswell, University of Rochester. Um, so I admit being a little um, unfamiliar with the with the uh, Android system, uh, it's not clear to me why you're wanting to privilege separate the the ad library and the application libraries. You know, since they're both in Java, right? Um, they're memory safe, so there's no messing around with each other's data structures, right? Unless you explicitly share them. So is, is the issue that the the ad library might misuse the privileges of the application, or the application misusing the permissions of the app library, or something like that? What what's the motivation? Um. Uh can can you repeat the So so why why what what protections are you getting by privilege separating the ad library and the applications right so so in the C world we do it because of memory safety i have one component it might have a buffer overflow which would affect another component right but you're in the java world you don't have that problem so what is the motivation for wanting to split these two components into different processes um, because uh, there are a, to a lot of privacy resources on a host app, and the and the advertisement library they share the same permission set of this host app, so it can uh, take advantage of those privileges to access sensitive host resources. Okay, so the concern the, con the concern the concern is that the the advertising library might access private private information belonging to the application. Yes, yes. So. So we isolated them, then they are in the separate sandbox, so uh, their resources are not shared now. Okay, okay, thank you. Advat Narkani from William Mary. So great work, by the way, it achieves this balance between uh, app and OS level enforcement. So my question is, uh, and you might have mentioned it, what do you do about uh, things that are already compiled? What do you do about native code and libraries that may be included? So if I want to include an ad library as native code, can this approach help with that, help with separating that? Yes, our solution is only working on um, DEX files, so native code is not included in our, in, in our range. Um, but from our experience, advertisement library mostly are using the DEX files, so they are operating in Java, Java world. And uh, 
uh, if they want to, if some app want to uh, load advertisement in native code, uh, they will use their own defined interface uh, in Java Java in, mm -hmm. in Java code. So we can still uh, we can still uh, cover those kind of things. Got it. Uh, one more follow up question: uh, Could you extend this approach to prevent native libraries? from circumventing in enforcement? Because uh, to my understanding, if I have something running in native code, I can actually circumvent the enforcement that you're doing. Would Is it possible, first of all, am I right? Or can you extend your enforcement to uh, prevent that? Uh, uh, can you repeat it? Sorry. Sure, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll be more clear. So if I have something running in native code, it may be able to circumvent your reference monitor, right? It may be able to re reverse some of the enforcement that, that you are going on. Is it possible with this model? Or we can take it offline. Uh, sorry, I didn't get it. Sure, we can take it offline. Thank you. Uh, do, do you mean what's the challenge of uh, separate code integrate? Uh, uh, the challenge is that we not only separate in code level, we also need to keep the visual fidelity. So those different integrated library is difficult to isolate them across process. Yeah, so just, yeah, 